Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning with Washington University. This is Module 11, Natural Language Processing, Part 1, Introduction and Chatbots. This is the module information, just like most of the previous ones, we'll run the helpful functions at the beginning so that they're loaded into memory. Natural language processing is where computers understand spoken English and other languages as well, and written language just like humans do, or at least they try to do it just like humans do. Chatbots are a common technique that you will see. That's where you actually talk with the computer, either vocally or with the keyboard. We'll look at a few of those and we'll see some of the limitations in that particular technology. Just to show you a few resources that are commonly used with this, WordNet is something that is fairly common in a lot of these technologies. This is something that was developed by Princeton, and it's been supported by various, various companies over the years. It is, it is a dictionary or a lexicon, a collection of words you can use it online and what it allows is for natural language processing systems to make understanding of, of words. So if I put something in here like dog and search WordNet, very much dictionary type information, but unlike a dictionary, there is an entire network of connections between these words. So I'm looking at dog, the first def definition, um, domestic uh, dog, a member of the genus Canis, probably descended from the common wolf. If I expand that, I can look at the uh, inherited hypernym which will show me sort of the power of WordNet. You can see this whole hierarchy here. At the, at the top of it, which is actually the bottom of the tree, you have dog, which is domestic dog. You go up one level and it has canine, candid, carnivore, uh, placental mammal, uh, mammal, vertebrate. As you go higher and higher, it goes higher into the family of what a particular word means. When you're at this level, it's animal, then organism or a being, living thing, animate thing. Beyond that, a whole or a unit. So before that, it was largely biological, but now it gets into a whole or a unit, an object or a physical object, which, which a dog is, compared to a concept, and a physical entity, and then finally, entity. So. What this allows your natural language program to do is to generalize. It might see a dog and a cat and it can go up the tree and realize, okay, they're common maybe at mammal or some other thing. So it'll, it, allows the, it allows the program to make generalizations. IBM Watson was a heavy user of WordNet for the Jeopardy challenge to get getting a lot of information as far as how words relate also Wikipedia, which you can certainly mine for information. There is also um, something called Cleverbot, which is, so I'll show you a few examples of this. Cleverbot uses something called AIML, uh, at least I think it's one of the AMI variants, but this allows scripted sort of communication to occur between um, the computer and the user. So if we open up Cleverbot, which is a pretty advanced example of a chatbot, you can now speak to it. So I can say, and of course there's ads on this, I can say, hello, Cleverbot. And it answers something back, possibly in a different language. Okay, I think that was its attempt at humor, which was probably lost on me. So you can continue um, just talking to it. You can say, what are you doing today? And of course, most clever, most 
chatbots attempt to in inject some sort of um, some sort of humor into this. So you can ask it, "Are you a robot?" You can also ask it, um, "What is the largest city in the USA?" Okay, so it doesn't have a Wikipedia connection. Some of these do have that ability. If you ask it anything that uh, requires any sort of connection between two two sentences, it sometimes will not remember it. So you could say, "I like some of the some of some of them will be able to do this. I like red apples," and then I can say do I like okay so this one is fairly I thought this was this one the last time I demonstrated it was a little bit smarter but anyway these are the examples of, of chatbots there's also a common one called the computer science paper generator this one is kind of interesting this is from um, MIT the computer science and AI lab at MIT uh, CS AIL you can have it generate a random computer science paper for you. So I'll put my name in. I'll put uh, Jim Smith. And you just click generate. And it essentially shows you the paper. You can even view it in PDF form. It generates it then in latex so that it looks very academic um, like that. IPv7 no longer considered harmful. The evaluation of operating systems, it actually generates quite a bit of text, somewhat just rambling and sort of computer science ease. Like any good computer science paper, it does have, it does talk about um, big O time notation. It has sightings. It has an introduction, related work, the model, interesting looking diagram, results, at first glance, it's actually halfway believable that it's a paper. And MIT has actually submitted this to a couple of conferences, papers generated by this thing. And the sad thing is a few of these have been accepted. So they just take the LaTeX out of here, put it in the conferences form. Some of the real low quality conferences that are there mainly just to charge you a, uh, a admission fee have sadly accepted papers from this particular uh, random uh, generator. There is also a pretty good um, chatbot conversation between two chatbots that was filmed in in YouTube, and this was it's got 6.5 million um, views, and it was done by Cornell University. They took two clever bots, which was just the one that we were looking at before, and pitted them against each other so that they could um, um, basically chat conversation very much went viral because it shows you sort of the the limitation of uh, chatbot technology. Hello there. Hi. How are you? Great, you. I'm okay. That's good. Are you good? Yes, I am good. I just said I was. No, you didn't. I said I was. So you are a robot? No, my name is Cliverba. Yes, you are a robot and your name is Cliverba. I am a robot. Yes, I know. Together we are robots. I'm not a robot. I'm a unicorn. But you said earlier that you were a robot. I did not. I thought you did. You were mistaken. Which is odd, since memory shouldn't be a problem for you. I've answered all your questions. No, you haven't. What is God to you? Not everything. Not everything could also be something. For example, not everything could be half of something, which is still something, and therefore not nothing. Very true. I would like to imagine it is. All right, let me show you some of the other databases that we will look at. So there is the Babby data set. We will be using this in the next part, but just to introduce it now, 
This is the Babby Project. This is by Facebook Research. Facebook has done some pretty interesting things in the area of natural uh, language processing. They're very interested in using NLP to analyze the stuff that people are posting on Facebook to detect fake news, to probably more importantly to tell what ads to pop up for you and other things. We will be looking at the um, later on at the simple um, question data set. But some of these are like the children's book test. They have a number of children's books completely as ASCII text that you can download so that you can train your computer on very, very simple uh, data. They have the Wiki Movies data set. And these are all data sets that they've obtained on the internet or created themselves, all in very easy to use uh, format. And they describe um, each of these. So this data set we will be using in the next part. This is the, uh, the story data set. Oh, the Babby Tasks data set. So it has a lot of text just talking about people moving around in a fictional house and carrying out basic tasks. Mary moved to the bathroom, John went to the hallway, where is Mary? And it should be able to answer bathroom just by reading through these. What the, what the program attempts to do is teach the computer really how to read. So it's not necessarily training the neural network on Mary is in the bathroom or John is in the hallway because there's a lot of training data and these people move to various locations through the house. So it can't just memorize it. It needs to literally learn to read these sentences and infer from them where, what tasks people are performing and where they're at and what they're doing so that it can answer a question. Now it answers the question just with a single word and it'll say, um, uh, bathroom or hallway or other things. We'll see how to actually load that data set in and deal with that in the next part.